Today is a very good day to be an OM system or Olympus uh, user or a Micro Four Thirds user if you're using a Lumix or uh, uh, any other Micro Four Thirds brand because OM system isn't releasing one new product today, it's releasing two new products and these are amazing products. So first of all, uh, I'm showing you the OM1 Mark II camera, uh, the follow-up of the OM1 uh, original version. And second of all, and I think a lot of people watching this channel uh, were anticipating for this, the 150 to 600 millimeter super zoom lens. And this is an enormous beast for a micro four thirds camera. But imagine 600 millimeters on this thing. It means it's a full frame equivalent of 1200 millimeters. 1200 millimeters in such a small lens as this. So uh, in this video, I'm going to look at this lens, the uh, 150 to 600. If you're more interested in the uh, OM1 Mark II camera, then push the link up here because I've made two different videos. And uh, in one video, I'm going to talk about the lens and the other video, I'm going to talk about the camera. So if you're watching the uh, lens version and you want to know more about the OM1 Mark II, then push the link up here for the OM1 uh, video. And if you're watching the OM1 video and you want to know more about the 150 to 600 super zoom lens, then push the link up here, you will get back to the right video. So two uh, totally different products, uh, a new camera and a new lens. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the lens, uh, because this is by far the most surprising thing that uh, uh, I expected and it proves that the brand is still very much alive. Um, there were a lot of rumors uh, over the past year that the uh, OM system wasn't releasing any more new products. Uh, that was all old developments from the Olympus period, but you have to look at in the right uh, dimensions. Uh, from the moment that OM system uh, that, that Olympus became OM system, it meant that the whole uh, company had to rebrand itself. So I think it's three years that OM system is allowed to use Olympus on their products. And in those three years, they have to change everything. So every product available with Olympus on it has to be rebranded to OM system. And this is going to take a lot of time and a lot of money. So I think that's what the company has uh, anticipated on uh, for the first uh, one and a half years and now they are the releasing new products with the new brand OM system on them and quality wise if I look at this thing I think there's nothing changed compared to the uh, Olympus era um, it's still it, it feels like the exact same quality that we haven't uh, done anything the only thing that I always hear people complaining about and I can I can show you that if you if you bought an uh, Olympus product in the past, you get these these beautiful black boxes where it comes in, and now you get a, a refurbished uh, a carton box. Uh, nothing fancy, but it's just a box. You know, it's it's all about what's inside, and I much rather have that they. Uh, uh, save some money on this box then they would save some money on the quality of this lens so i'm totally not bothered by uh, by this lens so uh, first things about this lens um, it is quite heavy for a micro four thirds lens so uh, i really uh, uh, tried shooting with it and it actually was quite difficult to uh, to go out and shoot with this lens um, because I received this and I can I can test it for two weeks, but it's the Christmas holiday. So I have the kids at home. I've been sick for a couple of days. It's been terrible weather. So the only thing that I actually tried this lens in was in a zoo. Uh, I've been to two zoos this, uh, <laughs> during this holiday. There might even be a third tomorrow. I have no idea yet, but um, I just tried it. And I have to be honest, I am amazed by the uh, quality of images uh, that this lens produces and um, the the amount of reach at 600 millimeters is just insane so what we're going to do first um, we're going to go to a burger zoo in uh, quite close to my house and we're going to see on location how this lens performs 
and then we're going to go back here and we're going to talk a little bit further about this lens the pros and cons that i have uh, received uh, of what i have found out uh, during the period that i had this lens to test out so let's go to the zoo first and then we'll dive a little bit further into uh, this particular lens so currently i'm at my favorite place in the netherlands to test equipment and i am testing this 150 to 600 millimeter lens this new lens uh, you can see that i've put some uh, stickers on it so it won't be recognized this easy you know i'm not allowed to show it to anyone so i have to be a little bit careful but i have it for about a week uh, or two but the first week was the christmas uh, holiday uh, kids at home very difficult raining all the time so i couldn't go out so uh, i had to do some test shots and so i came to burger zoo again to test this lens and let's see if we can find some birds flowers whatever just get some test shots at high iso rates and see uh, how this thing performs with uh, out of focus so uh, yeah i'm only already seeing some uh, beautiful red flowers over here uh, which make a pretty nice uh, uh, subject i'm gonna try it on and uh, yeah let's see uh, how this thing performs So there was a feeder on this staircase here with some yellow birds on it. Really beautiful and they kept coming back there. So it was a really nice subject to, uh, to try it on. I zoomed it in fully, 600 millimeters. Again, ISO 10,000 just to try image stabilization, out of focus. Just to try what this, uh, what this thing is capable of. And uh, yeah, I have to say until now, I'm actually quite impressed. already spotted another lizard but it was just behind a leaf a couple of seconds ago so let's try and have a look yeah it's now coming down so it's on this tree that you're seeing here and it was just behind the leaf there but now it is walking down and it's coming from underneath that leaf so I'm gonna try to shoot that again and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think this will be a really nice uh, uh, subject it's just the right focal range to uh, to get this shot so let's uh, try <laughs> try it with this uh, absolute beast of a lens so i just shot this image and just have a look here on the back of the camera i'm just looking at it and I am surprised by the amount of detail at 10,000 ISO, 600 millimeters, amazing. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to see this shot on the big screen at home. But uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, it, it looks quite promising. So uh, yeah, absolutely great. So uh, I have to say it is a bit heavy. If you're walking around here all day long, uh, it is a real heavy lens. So that's a negative but yeah it it is <laughs> it is great it is amazing so uh, uh yeah i'm gonna continue see if i can have some more shots here i've got enough time today so uh i can uh, spend all day here but it is the christmas holiday here um which means there are a lot of people and eventually it will be far too crowded here and all these birds will be scared off but uh, until then i'm gonna try to find some more shots and uh see if i can uh, <laughs> can, uh, can test a little bit more with this uh, with this camera So I photographed this pigeon before that's up here in this tree, but uh, last time it was on a staircase and this time it's in a more uh, green environment on a tree. So that looks really nice. 
I'm going to try to shoot this. I have to get a little bit back to get a bit of a close-up because uh, 2.8 meters uh, focal distance on 600 millimeters. So I can't get too close or else I have to zoom out to 150. Then it's about half a meter. But uh, yeah, I think, again, stunning results with this lens. So I'm, I'm really pleased with this. I'm having so much fun here. Uh, birds that I normally can't reach with, with my 100 to 400. Uh, are now easily in focus and the stabilization between this lens and the body it works amazing it's much better than uh, what i'm used to with the 100 to 400 so uh, yeah i don't know maybe i should uh, <laughs> maybe i should buy one of these but it's probably going to be very expensive i have no idea what the price tag is going to be on this lens uh, they didn't uh, tell that to me yet but uh, I'm, I'm expecting it to be around two three thousand euro i think so uh, yeah, let's see. But uh, for now, I'm pretty excited about this thing. So right now I'm back at my car and uh, I'm going to go back home and have a look at these uh, images. Uh, I think I got a lot of good example images of what this uh, lens is uh, capable of. And uh, the funny thing is that while I was in that bush, someone recognized me from my YouTube videos and uh, the Facebook from uh, Olympus photographers, photographers in the Netherlands. And uh, it was actually <laughs> quite, quite fun. And I was standing there with a lens and a camera that no one was allowed to see. And, uh, she was like, oh, I use my Olympus also. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, I think your name was Angela, if I was right. Uh, and you were thinking, what's this guy doing uh, uh, weird? I was just trying to hide the camera from your side. So <laughs> sorry for that. So after a day shooting with, uh, with this lens, uh, I have to be honest, uh, my hands were a little bit tired, but I'm not used to using uh, these large lenses all day long. And, um, but it was totally totally worth it and if I compare it to uh, for example this you know this is the 100 to 400 and it's also uh, this is a f5 to f6.3 lens which is exactly the same aperture as this 100 to 400 but it is significantly larger and heavier than this 100 to 400 but I have to be honest that this lens is so much more fun to use so the image stabilization in this lens is just phenomenal. And um, the beautiful thing is it's uh, stabilized in sync with the camera bodies. And that gives it on the widest end, so at 150 millimeters, it gives you seven stops of image stabilization. And on the telephoto end, so at 600 millimeters, uh, let's have a look here, because you can see that it gets quite a lot bigger if you put it out all the way. So if you put the lens cap on, it is a beast of a lens. But at the far end, 600 millimeters, you get six stop of image stabilization, which is a lot. And um, you can actually turn it on and off here on the side, image stabilization, manual focus, just the usual buttons. Uh, one thing that I noticed, which is pretty important with this lens, and it's actually not, not strange, it's just, uh, logically because you're covering such a long focal range is the uh, the meter of uh, which your focus point is you can choose between uh, 2.8 and 10 meters uh, the full distance of your uh, focal range or 10 meters to infinity and um, what I noticed is 
if you know that an animal is quite close to you, uh, between the 10 meters, just put that switch in the right position. Because if you miss the, uh, yeah, the, the spot, if you miss the uh, focus, <laughs> uh, the, it takes a long time before the lens starts uh, going back to 150 and again to the right position. So it's a long way to, to travel uh, for this lens internally. But if you just put it in the right spot for the, the distance that the animal is, uh, it goes, gets much easier and you get a lot of uh, direct right focusing points. And especially with the bird recognition and uh, all the focal points on, uh, yeah, it just works amazing. Uh, the only thing that I had to get used to with this lens is all the other uh, Olympus lenses. Let me try to show you here. I'll put them down for a second. If you look at this, the uh, one fifth of the 300 millimeter, of course, uh, has the uh, focus ring uh, in front, so uh, on front here. But if you look at, for example, the 100 to 400, you have the zoom ring in the back and the focus ring in the front. And it's the same with all the other uh, Olympus OM system lenses that I've used until now. But with this lens, it's the other way around. And I get why they did it, you know. Uh, I think that the, the little engines that, uh, that make this uh, focusing system possible are all in the back here. And if they would put it in front, it would mean that this lens would be very top heavy. So it would all be, all the weight would be on the front side. So you want that on the body side. but the negative uh, thing of that is, or negative, you just have to get used to it, is that at this point, uh, the, uh, the zoom ring is in front and the focus ring is on the back. But what actually happens if, if you're holding a big lens like this handheld, you're usually having your lens of your, somewhere here and your hand is on the body, but there's no way you can adjust the focus yourself with uh, with another hand, so it it pulls. It, it, it's a little bit tricky to to do it, but uh, to be honest, the autofocus just works so good on this lens that I was really amazed. I haven't tried it on flying birds, and I'm not that uh, a photographer that's that's really good in in bird photography in flight. Uh, I, I don't do it that much, but um, yeah, it it's definitely uh, getting used to a little bit. And I think if you're if you hold it like like this and I'll, I'll try to show you on, on this side I just put my thumb on the uh, focus ring here uh, so I could st still do some adjustments if I would want to and I could very easily switch it uh, with my thumb here with those but I have quite big hands so someone with small hands uh, uh, that might be a little bit uh, more a more a problem but uh, I think this whole lens is going to be a problem for someone with small hands so that's that's my honest opinion so um, yeah at, apart from that i don't have many negatives about this lens so they also made a very smart uh, lock system here so if you put it on the l you can't zoom it so it's uh, good for in your back and that if you have it on your neck that it doesn't uh, float out that easy then you have the the middle section and then you can feel that it it goes quite uh, that there's some friction when you uh, move the, the zooming ring and if you put it on the S I think it says speed it's very fast in and out so it's just what you want but if you have it around your neck I think uh, you can already see it here if it's on the S position the lens keeps coming out so that's quite a negative thing but if you put it on the T it's still in and on the lock of course it stays in so um, if you're walking around with it, I would always keep it on the T. But if you're uh, yeah, doing photography at some point, uh, you might uh, want to go to the S section to get through it uh, really fast. So uh, yeah, that's it. There are also some rubber dials here, uh, rubber buttons. I think somehow you can program this, but to be honest, I haven't had the time to, uh, to figure that out, how that, uh, how that works. So if you want to know the filter size, I don't know if you ever want to use a filter on a lens like this, but um, let's have a look. It is somewhere up top here. It's a 95 millimeter front end. There is some screwing uh, 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 in here, so you can adapt filters to this lens. It shouldn't be a problem, but it's a very 
wide uh, front element here of the lens. I got very small details about this lens. I have no idea what the price is going to be, but if I compare it to, for example, the 100 to 400, which uh, uh, I bought back then for, I believe, 1400 euros, then I think that this 150 to 600 lens is going to be way above that. And I think it's going to be somewhere, but that's my guess, just looking on quality wise, what you get for your uh, buck for money. I would say that this lens is going to be somewhere around 2000 to uh, 3000, somewhere in between that range is where this lens is going to be uh, positioned. That's my opinion, but I can be totally wrong here. Yeah, really nice. And if you want to know, I haven't tried it yet, but you can adapt the converters to it. So the 1.4 teleconverter and the two times converter. And imagine using this beast with the two times teleconverter. That's me this means that you can shoot 2400 millimeters full frame equivalent uh, with yeah a, a stabilized lens from from hand it's uh, i think it's amazing if that's uh, if that's possible i haven't tried it yet but you can put them on and it it does seem to work uh, that's the information that i uh, that i've got so let's get these off again So I will show you some more uh, images uh, from this lens uh, that I took in different zoos. Uh, I'll show them to you right now. And um, all of these images that you've seen also from the past in uh, the, the previous images that I showed you, all images are handheld with image stabilization on uh, in body and on the lens. And it was just a fun to use. You know, it is heavy, but the stabilization works really well. And if I compare it to the 100 to 400, it's much better, much better. So um, yeah, let's look at some more images and then we get back and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this lens. So about a month ago, uh, I recorded uh, the video that you just watched and uh, did my testing with the lens and then I returned it to OM system. But uh, right now I'm editing uh, the video and putting everything together. And I realized that the problem that I had in my on location videos that I normally make on this channel uh, was also occurring on <laughs> this video. And that was that my microphone was broken. So uh, in the last part of the video, uh, the sound got really uh, scratchy and uh, really bad. So I have to re-record the ending of this video and that's what I'm doing right now. So uh, my conclusion of this lens was that it is an amazing uh, addition to the Micro Four Thirds segment, uh, especially for wildlife photographers. Uh, it is an excellent lens. It's very sharp. Uh, the image stabilization, that's uh, the thing that noticed me the most. It is so good. I don't know what it is, but it, it it, in my opinion, it's much better than the 100 to 400. And that makes it a lot easier to photograph with. And the lens is a bit heavier, but because of that image stabilization, it doesn't matter. And because of that reach, the, the amount of fun that you can have with that lens is just much and much higher. And I, I would have loved to try that lens as a landscape photographer, uh, because I do a lot of long lens landscape photography. But 
I just didn't have the time, didn't have the chance. So maybe I can uh, use it again uh, sometime, uh, borrow it again and take it into the landscape uh, uh, with me. But I was just surprised by the results that I had uh, only in a zoo, uh, of course. But uh, yeah, I've seen uh, images from other ambassadors here in the Netherlands that are better in wildlife and bird photography. Um, if you want to have a look at them, uh, search for Tom Reuvers or Alexander Koenders. Uh, they've been using it for a while and uh, they have excellent images. So uh, if you have any questions about this lens, you can always contact me or I can bring you in contact with someone that, uh, that knows the answer or has more experience with it. But in my opinion, it is a very good addition to uh, the lens. And until now, I still don't know what the price tag is going to be on this lens. So if I know it uh, when the, the lens is released, that's going to be at the end of January, uh, if I believe. Uh, I will put it underneath here uh, somewhere in the video or in the description underneath the video. Uh, also a link to the website of Orm System where you can read more about this stuff. Um, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it uh, at least a little bit informative, <laughs> informative uh, about this lens. And um, yeah, it's, you should definitely consider it when you're a micro four thirds photographer or any other photographer because I think it's a brilliant uh, piece of technology. So thanks for watching. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to push the thumbs up button. You will massively help this channel to grow. And there is a subscribe button underneath this video. If you push that, uh, you will get a message when I release my next video. Uh, most of my videos, 90% of them are on location landscape photography uh, uh, videos. So this was a bit of a different one. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not afraid of using telephoto lenses. So everything I do is with Micro Four Thirds uh, equipment uh, from OM System slash Olympus in the past. Um, so if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel because there is a lot of that stuff uh, coming. And uh, yeah, I just enjoy working with, with that equipment. So thanks for watching, hope to see you on the next one. And once again, if you want to see more about the OM1 Mark II video, then push the link up here, you will get to the uh, Mark II video. So see you next time, bye bye.